Петербург. Разбира се, че е реклама, много добра реклама. В Париж всяка година идват 70 милиона туристи. Много от тези туристи ще видят тази изложба и ще проявят любопитството да дойдат в България да видят на място и тракийската гробница, и голямата косатка. Ви ще проявят любопитството да дойдат в България да видят на място и тракийската гробница, и голямата косатка. Да дойдат в България да видят на място и тракийската гробница, и голямата косатка. Еха! Московчанката е на бокова да прави разлика между косатка и косматка. Милата, за нея просто и двете са големи. Това е положението, другари. Христос възкръсна. Бог да благослови всички добри хора тук и навсякъде по света. Това е диагноза. Предаването, което търси истината и държи на справедливостта. Затова се радва на най-вярната публика. И няма друго като него, поне сред европейските медии. Видяхте ли началото? Като се сетя за културата на генералната секретарка на ЮНЕСКО, сиреч на фюрерката на световната култура и образование, ми иде да се хвана за... Не, нямам кобур, за главата. Когато ви говоря, че комунистът се ражда толкова тъп, че чак е влъбнат, не вярвате, а? Какво да очакваме от другарката Бокова, Ирина Георгиевна, след като цели 50 лазърника са пълнили чутората и с марксизъм, ленинизъм, сталинизъм, живковизъм? И това се получава от цялата тази работа. Тежко и горко на човечеството. Чудно ли е, че е в регрес? Бокова няма представа, че хълмът в Казанлъшко, където при археологически разкопки през 2004 година откриха гробница на древен българин, пардон, на тракиец, се нарича голяма косматка. Голямата косатка или Орцинус Орка е едър кит от семейството на делфините. Бозайник, най-големият делфин. Наричат го и кит с зъби. Иначе, през периода 5 до 3 век преди Рождество Христово, тък му от района на голяма косматка, потеглени на запад българите, назовавани от историците келти. Но това е тема, която ще обсъдим в навечерието на 24 май. Hi, I'm Alex Newman. I'm a foreign correspondent for the New American Magazine. And today I want to talk to you about something that concerns me deeply. According to an April 2015 article published in the Establishment Controlled Financial Times, current UNESCO boss Irina Bokova is considered to be the next front runner to serve as the Secretary General of the United Nations. Apparently, her candidacy is acceptable to the Obama administration, the Kremlin, and other key players in making this decision. Plus, she's the right gender, and she comes from Eastern Europe. And in this day and age of collectivism and identity politics, those traits are apparently important for leadership. But who is Bokova? And why might the establishment hope to see her lead what I and many others often ridicule as the dictator's club? Well, for one, she's going to fit right in, just like she fit right in at Putin's Victory Day celebrations in May as the Soviet national anthem blared in the background and communist hammer and sickle flags flapped in the breeze. The first thing you need to know about Bokova is that she's a Bulgarian Communist Party operative with deep ties to the mass murdering regime that once enslaved her homeland. In fact, the UNESCO chief is even what's known as a red diaper baby, a child born to devoted communist parents. Bokova's father, aside from being a communist politician and Politburo member in the savage regime ruling over the People's Republic of Bulgaria, was also editor-in-chief of the Bulgarian Communist Party's official propaganda organ, known as Rabotnicesko Delo. Estimates suggest that the brutal dictatorship slaughtered somewhere between 100,000 and 250,000 people, among them dissidents, Christians, and many others. The real numbers could be even higher. In statistics of democide, democide and mass murder since 1900, political science professor R.J. Rummel of the University of Hawaii put the body count racked up by the Bulgarian communists at around 222,000. Many more were ruthlessly tortured and persecuted. Despite those atrocities, Bokova herself was an enthusiastic youth member of the Bulgarian Communist Party, later becoming an adult member and even serving in various capacities within the brutal dictatorship. Because of her intimate and myriad links to the regime and her communist fervor, Bokova was even given the special privilege of studying at the mass-murdering Soviet regime's elite Moscow State Institute of International Relations. Bokova remained within the Communist Party even after it rebranded itself the Bulgarian Socialist Party following the apparent collapse of the communist terror regime. 
Despite the name change to gain access to U.S. and European Union taxpayer-funded benefits, the Ruthless Party, which is still in charge today, remains dominated by the same cutthroats of yesteryear. Prokova served two terms in the Bulgarian parliament as a member of the rebranded Communist Party and went on to serve as the foreign minister for Prime Minister Zan Vidinov, another communist operative and former agent for the savage Bulgarian branch of the KGB. Bokova's current job, Director General of the UN Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, or UNESCO, was secured with support from President Obama. It also ought to raise concerns, and not just because the selection drew widespread condemnation from survivors of communist Bulgarian gulags who called the decision shameful. While it was certainly shameful, it was not surprising. The scandal-plagued UN organization, which is seeking to become the global education ministry and impose its world core curriculum on all of humanity, was such a hotbed of communist criminals, dictators, Islamists, mass murderers, and anti-American radicals that the Ronald Reagan administration withdrew U.S. membership in it. Bokova's bid to lead the UN is, unsurprisingly, being celebrated as an opportunity to give third world autocrats a bigger voice in global governance as humanity is prepared for what globalists refer to as their new multipolar world order. Bokova's job will be to facilitate that transition. However, for Americans and the billions of victims of communism around the world, Bokova's candidacy and front-runner status offer an excellent opportunity to expose the UN and its member regimes for what they are, a threat to humanity and human liberty. As awareness of this threat grows across the United States and the world, humanity should work to disband the UN and prosecute all of the communists who escaped unpunished after the apparent collapse of the Soviet Union. For the sake of liberty, prosperity, and common sense, it's time for the UN and Bokova to be exposed and stopped.